Hello. To conclude these videos on testing, I'll try, I will address the question when to stop testing. So the problem, as I told you, you have no infinite time and basically the, the, the testing team, and now I'm really talking from the point of view of the quality assurance team, is basically to decide when the, what is the level of quality of the system. And um, I will do it in, first I will talk a, a short introduction about uh, when to stop testing. And then I, I will talk about um, pattern language uh, written by uh, developer uh, testers that have um, that described what is their behavior. Okay. So when is when stop te testing? So when is um, enough? Uh, there are some uh, empirical data that uh, tells me if um, if I found uh, so the, the number of uh, bugs that still or the faults, the number of faults that are still in the code, it's correlated with how many faults I, I, I was able to, to, to find in the last period. So it means that if I am uh, keep finding, finding faults, it means there, there are more faults there. So the probability increases with uh, the number of faults I find. So, so it means that uh, by finding faults, I, I, I'm more, more than fixing the program, I'm uh, actually realizing oh, what is its level of quality, okay? So, uh, there are techniques try, trying to do this. One that probably is a bit, um, is fault injection, okay? What happens is basically you inject faults and then you just, uh, the team tries to, to find faults and then you see the percentage of the injected faults and that you can have an idea. This is okay, but uh, not really because it, mean, it, it would mean that um, the type of faults you injected should be representative of the types of faults that exist, which uh, actually the harder faults are the ones that you don't realize about them, and so you cannot find a representative uh, uh, fault to inject there, okay? So, but, uh, but, but okay. But, um, then sometimes is you finish testing when the times run out and they actually is uh, the pressure for the market, okay, and depending on the product. So what, what is relevant here is basically decide how you, you are going uh, to spend your time testing. So it's, it's uh, the, the point of a quality assurance team is where are going to be more efficient in terms of doing our work, okay? And I'm gonna describe a pattern, uh, a pattern for system testing done by a team. Uh, so this is a team uh, that uh, worked in, um, so this is a report for, for, from a team that worked on testing on uh, uh, software for telecommunications. So it was a quality assurance team they basically, software for companies, they had a lot of uh, concurrent, concurrency issues. We'll find that some of these patterns really address the problem of uh, raising conditions, okay? Um, so they were not developers. Basically, they are really testing the system. We'll see when you go, when you, you will go through these patterns, you see that some of them point to another pattern language on uh, relationship with the, 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 the end users, okay? Which Actually, it's interesting if you think because, uh, uh, as you know, the quality assurance teams, when they test the complete system, they think in, in terms of the value. So they need to be really close and to with the end users, users of the system. And actually, the, it's uh, these patterns that I'm not going to I'm not going to address now, but are patterns about the create, creating a relationship with them. So this team, they believe. So that's that human aspects of testing is that they believe that they can do a better work if they have a good relationship with the end users because actually uh, this is not acceptance tests yet, it's not user tests, but uh, it's, it's good to be close to them to understand what is the value of the system and decide uh, what to do. So we'll find, I'm, I'm not going through all of them here in the video, so you have time to, to, to read and uh, uh, I'm going to talk a, a couple of them, okay, to read and think about them in detail. So the testers, more important the test cases, 
Um, there is an emphasis here about um, when you do so. We, you, you have learned about uh, how to automatically define tests, but these guys that really have experience on testing say there's one point that uh, is really to have a human being testing. For instance, you find one pattern, one, one pattern that talks about simulation. So you can create a simulation that simulates the, the, the tests. So you, you just automate the tests, but then a human being is able to do things and find bugs that uh, you cannot do automatically. Okay? Especially, for instance, they talk about patterns so that you do, are doing something and then you break at the beginning. You, you, you stop and do something completely unexpected and it's a way to find uh, bugs. Another thing they describe that's interesting is that um, how they are able to realize which parts are important, which parts have, have more bugs. And um, for instance, they read documentation and if the documentation is ambiguous, they see which part of the documentation is ambiguous and which, which models implement what is referred in the ambiguous documentation. And they go for these modules because they, their experience tells them that there will be more bugs there. Okay? Another thing is that they look at um, uh, old reports. So this is a system that has several ver versions have been tested. And so if there's a problem in the past, they, they took some time to debug some module. It took in the next versions, there, was, there still will be problems there. And it's interesting to think about it. Why? Well, if they have been debugging this module and probably there are no bugs, why are there are bugs again there? Why? Because probably the documentation for this module is ambiguous, because probably because the code for this model is uh, unreadable or more difficult to read and to understand, or because this module is about something component that is more complex. And uh, um, for instance, if it is a component that deals with concurrency, Okay, so these are the kind of things that they look and they have experience at, uh, at doing. Another thing that they describe uh, is that um, it's this pattern getting involved early, which is interesting in the sense that you can start thinking about the tests even before um, the system is being implemented. So by looking at, the, uh, at the, um, the implementation, I think I talked about already about this, this idea that by looking at ambiguous documentation, you say, well, if, if this is ambiguous, the system is not implemented yet, but probably will have problems there. And, and this is a, a, a nice side effect that if you go first for, the, if the, the, the acceptance, um, the quality assurance team goes for the documentation first, even before the system is implemented, they will ask questions because they look at the documentation and they think in terms of, how are you going to test it? Okay, they do not think, uh, in terms of, I'm not going to go into develop it, but, but by saying, how are we going to test it? And if it's not clear for them how they are going to test it, they were going to ask questions. And by asking questions, probably the, the, the documentation can be uh, changed and uh, uh, become less ambiguous, which, which, which is great. So you, in some sense, you do debug of the requirement specification. Okay. I think that's also read these patterns. I think they will give you now this uh, idea that um, probably will will not uh, we will not address in the course because we are really focused on the programming side. But uh, uh, our uh, quality assurance team look at this, and we'll see this uh, as I already told you. They try to to have a good uh, relationship both with the end users and the developers because when you have different teams it's very easy so the human the, the human cons uh, concerns about the human relationships become uh, relevant and uh, can be a source of noise so we'll find some patterns for it as well as well so good read and good learn bye